Um, up next, and definitely last but not least, uh, I-80 Gold, a presentation I'm personally looking forward to because I need to catch up on their discoveries they've been making. It's a developer. Uh, they're in Nevada. And it's often, oftentimes, developers don't really put any effort into exploration uh, during their development phase. But uh, I-80 has made five discoveries since uh, mid-2022. And I'm really looking forward to hearing from Tyler Hill, because he's their chief geologist. There's nobody else who could tell us more about the discoveries. And uh, Tyler, it's great to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us on stage. And uh, go ahead. All right. Thanks, Kai. Thanks, everyone, for being here today. Appreciate you coming out. So um, like I said, I'm the chief geologist for IED Gold. So today we'll talk about our hilltop discovery in Nevada and as well as some other things about IED Gold. Uh, just general disclaimer, I'm sure I'll make some forward-looking statements. So before we get into the discovery talk, I just want to touch a little bit on gold and why gold is important and why I think you should own it. Um, so during the 90s and 2000s, central banks were generally selling gold reserves, and you can see that in the red here. But something has changed in the last decade or so, and whether that's deglobalization and challenges to the U.S. dollar as a reserve currency, or just diversification away from the U.S. dollar uh, due to the tendency to impose sanctions, um, many central banks have been buying gold in the last decade. And many countries are now selling uh, the U.S. dollar and buying gold, particularly those BRICS nations. Uh, and so the move away from the U.S. dollar will likely lead to a lower dollar, and gold will be the biggest benefactor. Since 2000, gold has been one of the few currencies to have realized consistent gains of over 9%. Gold is the, the world's only currency with no political attachment, no debt obligation, and no printing press. And some consider gold to be the world's first currency and maybe also its last. Uh, so we are a gold-focused company, but the discovery we'll talk about today also has a very significant zinc component, so I want to touch on the zinc market a bit. Uh, so the primary use for zinc is in galvanization of steel, and that drives about 60% of its use. There is a growing demand, and most of that is coming from uh, the production of wind turbines, uh, both offshore and onshore wind turbines. So a 10 megawatt offshore wind turbine requires about four tons of zinc, and a 100 megawatt uh, solar power park requires about 240 tons of zinc. But the question remains, can supply keep pace with demand? And that's a common theme you'll see, I think you've heard today um, throughout the talks. Uh, because it does take five to 10 years to permit and build a mine on top of that discovery phase before then. Uh, so it's very different from something like the oil and gas industry, which Joanna talked about earlier, where you drill a well and maybe in weeks to months you're producing and, and you're making uh, money. Uh, in the mining industry, it's, it's quite a bit different. So, uh, there is an estimate that we'll need about $1.7 trillion of investment over the next 15 years to meet our climate goals. So there's going to need to be a significant amount of investment in the mining industry. Uh-oh, our image isn't showing. Uh, we are in central Nevada. All of our projects are in central Nevada on the Carlin and Battle Mountain trends, which there should be an image here to show that. Uh, but this collectively represents the world's uh, most productive gold district, with over 200 million ounces of gold being produced out of this small post postage stamp in northern Nevada. We are the largest holder of gold resources in central Nevada, next to Nevada Gold Mines, which is a Barrick and Newmont joint venture. So we have about 15 million ounces of MINI resources in gold, and about 175 million ounces of silver resources. Ruby Hill is our flagship asset and is host to multiple gold and polymetallic deposits. So that's gold, silver, lead, and zinc. Uh, and the discovery of the Hilltop Zone in mid-2022 has quickly become the focus of exploration for this year. And that's what I'll be talking about today. So a little on the Eureka District and the history of it. So it's actually uh, one of the earliest districts discovered in Nevada. It was discovered in 1864. Uh, and this was the CRD mineralization. So if you were around for Kit's talk this morning, this is the same st type and style of mineralization. It's uh, massive sulfide mineralization and polymetallic. 
It took them about five years to uh, figure out the smelting technology to de develop these ores back in the 1800s. Um, and after that, they were off to the races, and this district produced quite a bit uh, through the late 1800s into the early 1900s. There was uh, the discovery of the fad deposit in the 1930s, and in 1941, a shaft was sunk to 2,500 feet there uh, to go after that ore body. However, uh, when they were sinking that shaft, they hit a fault that was holding back a lot of water. It flooded out the shaft, and so they never got down to actually mine this ore body, and it still sits there today, um, and we'll talk about that a little later. There was additional shafts uh, sunk in the district, uh, some more mining, and then kind of between the 60s and the 90s, the district was largely dormant. So it was purchased out of bankruptcy by Homestake in 92. Uh, they very quickly found what is the Archimedes Pit here. Uh, it's a Carlin-type gold deposit. Uh, it produced about 1.5 million ounces of oxide gold. It began production in 98. Uh, Barrett Gold later acquired Homestake, and the mine was closed in 2014, and Barrick sold the property to Waterton, which is a private equity group, in 2015. Uh, they did a little amount of work, not much, uh, didn't uh, do much mining, and we acquired the property in 2021. We quickly started an exploration drilling campaign, uh, and we've made numerous discoveries, and we're gonna focus on the hilltop zone, uh, which is just actually on the southern margin of the pit you see here. All right, oh, this slide is all. Um, so, yeah, this. We have multiple deposit types. So we have refractory gold at Ruby Deeps. We have oxide gold underground in the 426 zone. We have oxide gold open pit mineralization, polymetallic CRD mineralization, as well as SCARN, uh, zinc SCARN base metal mineralization. We do have an operating heap leach facility, on-site oxide milling facility, and our key initiatives for 2023 include completing a permitting program uh, to begin underground production, P a PEA and resource update for Ruby Deeps, which is the gold-only portion of the deposit. We're advancing metallurgy for the polymetallics. Uh, we have ongoing exploration and definition drilling, testing high-priority uh, geophysical anomalies, among others. And we'll have a year-end resource update that will include the base metal component. In this uh, image here, so this is the Archimedes pit. So the discovery we're talking about is in this area, what we're referring to as hilltop. Uh, some of these other uh, red polygons are other uh, polymetallic CRD deposits throughout the district. So that fad deposit where the shaft was sunk in 1941 sits right down here to the south. Uh, and this was our previous property boundary. However, we have entered into an agreement to acquire this land down here to the south about a month ago now. All right, looking at a district uh, scale view. Uh, so there are deposits over about 10 kilometers of strike length here. All of these red deposits are polymetallic CRD deposits with the gold being uh, basically gold only Carlin type deposits. Uh, the Eureka district ranks as one of the world's highest grade CRD districts. Uh, the historic Ruby Hill mine, which sits uh, right here, uh, it produced almost 2 million ounces of gold at about 0.83 ounce per ton gold. Uh, it also produced about 40 million ounces of silver at around 20 ounces per ton. And it also contained over 15% lead. So it was very, very high grade. And on gold alone, if it was producing today, it would be the highest grade gold deposit in Nevada. The Hilltop Corridor, which is this area south of the pit uh, down to the fat area, is an untested exploration area that we're going to focus on this year. Uh, and it's important to, point, important to point out, there's been no significant exploration for base metals in the district since the 1960s. Uh, so there's a real opportunity here uh, for the base metals. All right, so we'll zoom in here on the pit and uh, what we've been drilling. So we've discovered both CRD and SCARN sulfide mineralization in our initial drill testing here. Uh, the discovery hole was hole 25 right here in the, what we now define as the lower zone. 
238 grams silver, 11% zinc, and 9% lead over 9.4 meters. Uh, after that hole, we came up to this area to drill some additional holes targeting this lower zone. And that's when we discovered this upper zone, which sits only 150 meters below surface. And our discovery hole there was hole 43 with almost a gram gold, 515 grams silver, 10.5% zinc, and almost 30% lead over 28.3 meters. So quite a spectacular intercept. Uh, since then, we've kind of been off to the races, drilling off around this upper zone as well as the lower zone. We've done considerable step out drilling to the east. Um, and we've also identified the controlling structure here, here which is known as the hilltop fault. Uh, so this is a near vertical fault zone and it strikes kind of to the northwest here. Uh, our additional drilling out to the east, so this was at the end of last year, hole 61, 12.3% zinc over 39.6 meters. And then this hole, hole 9 and hole 10, we just press released these about two hours ago, so it's hot off the press. Uh, so 2310, uh, 226 grams per ton silver, 9.7 zinc, and 10% lead. And that was just out to the east here. So this is potentially a completely new zone of CRD mineralization. Further out to the west, we had 9.2% zinc over three meters in a new zone a little deeper down. And then uh, a bit closer to the surface, 6.7% zinc and three and a half grams gold over 18.3 meters. Uh, so we continue to drill along this corridor, and we will continue to step to the south uh, to target more of these northwest striking fault structures. All right, a cross section here of the mineralization. So you see the upper hilltop zone here, the lower zone down here. So they're fairly flat-lying ore bodies. Uh, there is a large intrusive body off to the east, which is probably the source of the mineralization. And we get into scarn mineralization here off to the east where we're closer to the intrusion. So drilling in 2023 is extended mineralization along the hilltop fault structure over a strike length of 750 meters. The polymetallic base mineral mineralization discovered by us in 2023 includes that east hilltop intercept here and then uh, the CRD breaches zone, which is out here to the west, and then this, this deeper zone that we're calling the Gettys a zone down here. So we have a large-scale multi-rig drill program underway. We have five rigs out here right now drilling away. Uh, the hilltop corridor further to the south is almost completely untested, so that gives us another kilometer and a half of strike length to the south uh, to continue drill testing. Uh, so this is... Uh, more, just a little more on the, the cross section here, and I think some of these slides got uh, moved around, but uh, we'll just point out some of this is very high grade uh, gold. So one of our intercepts here, 60 grams per ton gold, 908 grams per ton silver, 15.7% lead and 1.1% zinc over 10 meters. So um, that's around uh, $5,000 a ton in rock value. So it's very high grade uh, and that uh, makes this a very good deposit. So uh, geophysics has been important to uh, help vector in and target these new zones of mineralization. So we had an IP survey done here last fall, and it really highlighted it really highlighted this upper hilltop zone. So where we we had already discovered the mineralization here but the IP survey showed a strong chargeability anomaly there. Uh, we did an IP survey further to the south and it showed an even larger uh, chargeability anomaly here to the south and that's what we're calling our 4H target. And so we'll be drill testing this this year in hopes of finding more CRD mineralization. Uh, we've also done uh, magnetotelluric uh, geophysics which has also been important <clears throat> in identifying fault structures and additional mineralization. We do have development plans, so we're planned to go underground at the end of this year and we'll portal out of the pit. And so the first mineralization we get to is the 426 zone. So this is a gold carlin type, on, uh, gold only carlin type zone here. Uh, and so part of this is oxide and the rest is sulfide. So we'll get under here, do drilling and mining. We will drift over to the blackjack deposit. This is a zinc scarn right underneath the bottom of the pit. 
And then we'll drift to the south to get at the hilltop zones and that mineralization there to continue to define that from underground. A little more on the development plan, so you can see the planned uh, development here in the white uh, with the ore bodies as well and the mineralization. So the upper hilltop zone sits here with the lower zone down here. This is our Ruby Deeps uh, carlin sulfide zone as well as the 426 zone uh, in here and then blackjack right underneath the pit. So we're looking forward to getting underground and drilling this out from, uh, from underground. It's cheaper and more efficient to drill that way. All right, so this is uh, the acquisition I touched on earlier, but this was an agreement we entered into about a month ago. Uh, so this is with uh, Paycor Minerals, which we are taking over. And they have this property uh, just to the south of us here. And so they had been drilling uh, in this area known as the FAD deposit. Uh, there is a historical resource that's non-43101 compliant, but we'll be looking to bring that into uh, an updated 43101 resource. It's about three and a half million tons at five grams per ton gold, almost 200 grams per ton silver, 8% zinc, and almost 4% lead. So again, very high grade. Uh, it's located in close proximity to our processing infrastructure and it's a long trend for mineralization being drilled at Hilltop. So this is our discovery area. This is that Hilltop corridor further to the south where we will do significant amount of drilling this year. And then this is the FAD deposit here, which is this three and a half million tons. So we expect this deal to close um, here in just a couple weeks. And w there is uh, drilling going on down here with two rigs right now. Um, Again, an just another look at the, uh, so this is the chargeability anomaly down there to the south. So this is our upper hilltop chargeability anomaly. Uh, this is the one down to the south, which is much larger. And some of the plant, uh, first few holes we have planned to test that area. Uh, so we have multiple anomalies identified and will be tested in the 2023 program, and that includes the 4-H target. Uh, we have a deeper MT target and a Spring Valley target. Uh, recent drilling at uh, FAD, so on that previous slide, uh, some of their intercepts, 27.4 meters at 8 grams per ton gold, 79 grams per ton silver, 10% zinc and 1% lead, so very high grade, 14.8 uh, meters at 7 grams per ton gold, 376 grams per ton silver, 6.3 zinc and 10.3 lead. Uh, so very high grade there, and we're looking forward to doing more uh, additional drill work. Uh, an analogous uh, deposit to ours, these slides are, some of the images are messed up here, uh, but would be the La Ronde mine in Canada, which is one of Agnico Eagle's flagship mines. Uh, it's similar grade, so uh, the La Ronde mine is about 4.6 grams per ton gold, 20 grams per ton silver, 1% zinc, and uh, about a quarter percent copper. Uh, and this is, Agne or, yeah, Agnico's stock chart here over the years. And I think the discovery of uh, Laron was made somewhere in the early 90s. So uh, you can see kind of how they've taken off since then. So I think the last few slides here, uh, we'll go back and look at some of our uh, gold zones. So the Ruby Deep Zone uh, is something we've been drilling over the last year to year and a half. Uh, it has significant high-grade gold intercepts. Uh, 33 meters of 20 grams was one of our best intercepts. And uh, we had about 70 meters of seven and a half grams as well. Uh, it remains open along strike. And our recent drill hole here, hole 23.9, uh, expanded that 200 meters to the south uh, with uh, 5.8 meters of 9.9 .9 grams. This is a long section of the Ruby Deep Zone here, so we're looking off to the east. Uh, the mineralization is fairly flat lying, uh, and it's about 700 meters in strike length, and then we extended it another 200 meters with this hole nine that was press released today. So we'll do some additional infill drilling here in between, uh, and hopefully continue that expansion further to the south. Uh, you can see some of the intercepts, uh, nine grams over 50 meters, uh, 10 grams over 41.8. So it's a very continuous high-grade ore body. And the rock quality is actually fairly good. 
for a Carlin type deposit. Um, often Carlin type deposits aren't like a lot of those deposits in Canada or Australia where it comes out as stick rock. Uh, some of this stuff can be pretty soft and clay and sometimes difficult to work with, but it looks like it's pretty good here at Ruby Hill. All right, so in summary, we are a growth-focused uh, company. Uh, we have an organic growth platform with the goal of becoming Nevada's second largest gold producer with sustainable development opportunities. We are executing our plan to grow reserves, resources, production, and cash flow. And we're prioritizing reserve increases in mine development with minimal share dilution. Uh, so uh, our CEO is Ewan Downey, who has been involved in Discovery's uh, prior companies. So Wolfed In Resources uh, was uh, a company he was part of, I believe CEO, uh, that won the Prospector and Developers Association uh, Exploration Award in 2003 for their Discovery at the, uh, west, the west zone uh, with Wolfden Resources. And then a little on the banks here that cover us. So we're covered by uh, many of the large Canadian banks. Uh, and then our share structure here, fully diluted, about 266 million shares. We have a market cap of about 800 million Canadian currently. And that's our mineral resources. And I believe that's all I have, so thanks. Fantastic. Well done. Thanks. Well done. We have, we have time for one question before we get to the awards ceremony. Does anybody have a question for Tyler? Fantastic. Tyler, you'll, you'll be around. Yeah. You, uh, you, there's a meet and greet after William's keynote as well, just outside. Make sure to grab him because I think I-80 is doing a great job there in Nevada and uh, following the discoveries has been fantastic. Thanks, Awesome. Tyler, thank you so much.